Katrina here from Scrappy Horses and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to share with you how I made this faux cloth covered journal. I took a little bit of glycerin and I added it to a bottle of water and I took that then and sprayed my paper. Now my paper is cut so that it'll extend over the journal by about an inch on each side. Now I've taken this piece of cardboard, it's actually cereal box, I've taken two layers, glued them together, and cut it six by nine. I've scored in a one inch spine by scoring at about four and an eighth and five and an eighth inches. I let the paper that I sprayed with glycerin dry overnight so that that could really soak into the paper. And now I'm going to take my actual journal foundation and I'm gonna lay it on the paper and glue it into place. Now when I glue my covers on, I like to use a double-sided tape as well as fabric tack glue. Now um, I'm using a wide tape here so I wanted to cut it down to the right size. So I'm going to the back of my journal and I'm just laying in that double-sided tape and then I'll cover that with fabric tack and lay it on top of that paper. You'll notice after I place this onto the paper and you'll see that paper come up here in just a second, you'll notice that it doesn't move like paper anymore. It moves more like fabric, which is what the glycerin does to it. It sort of makes it um, fabric-like or almost like a really uh, lightweight leather. Um, I've done this with craft paper before and it definitely makes craft paper, if you use a heavy craft paper, almost feel like leather. I'm following the same procedure here on the front and back covers. Again, just placing in my double-sided tape as well as I'm going to cover it with fabric tack. I like fabric tack. It glues just about anything to just about anything. The only time I don't use fabric tack is if I'm putting in something plastic or metal and then I usually go to my E6000. You can really see here how that paper is almost like fabric when it comes over um, it just loses all that crispness and it just becomes so fabric-like. All right, here I'm sort of pressing in the spine. I like to put it on the spine first, then rub it up over the cover and the back. That way it doesn't rip when I um, bring it up later. Some people go ahead and lay it down flat and sometimes I've had my covers rip a little bit and so that's the reason I do it that way. Here I have mitered the corners and that will keep the uh, bulk down in those corner sections. And by mitering the corners, I just mean cutting off on the diagonals. Now I'm just sort of training this paper, which is very easy to train now that I've added this glycerin. Again, it's almost like fabric. So it's just really folding over quite easily. And again, I'll add the double-sided tape as well as some fabric tack again. This paper happens to be from Colorbach. I've had it in my stash for quite a while, and I think it's going to go beautifully with the digi that's going to go on the front of this. I have this very adorable little digi that you're going to see here, or that you saw at the beginning, and you're going to see me put it on, and I believe it goes really nicely with it. Um, it's in sort of pinks and burgundy colors and reds, so I wanted to pick up some of those colors as well as add a little bit more of the yellow and golds, although there is some gold in my digi also on the front. Lucky for me that this particular paper has sort of a glossy part. So when I accidentally laid my tape down, I, uh, it came off pretty easily. So here I'm taking 
the paper that I've chosen to coordinate to lay on the inside, I'm laying it on the right hand side. This will be the back cover here. For the inside of my book, I'm just using a tape runner as well as the fabric tack. I believe the outside of journals and albums take a little more of a beating um, than the inside does. So that's why I use the double side tape on the inside. Now on my uh, front cover on the inside, I'm going to use this piece of purple stripe to coordinate and it's going to lay right in on top of that. I wanted something a little different on the front and back. Now the spine, it's really not going to matter what was put in there because I'm going to be covering it. Right here I'm hole punching with my uh, crocodile and I'm going to lay in some little black eyelets and that is going to make the binding for my pages on the inside. Now this is a very simple binding form and I'm going to show you how that works here in a minute. So I'm just putting those eyelets in with my crocodile and now I'm going to cover that because the back side of the eyelet isn't very pretty. I've got this beautiful washi tape that is actually from Japan. My cousin sent this to me and actually this book is for my cousin. So I hope I get it sent to her before she sees this video, if she does see it. Sometimes she comes over and checks out my channel. So uh, she may see it here before she receives it, I'm not sure. She and her husband take trips to Japan often. Um, he is a band director and does music over there and she accompanies him on his trips. So I thought this little book would be wonderful for her to document some of her experiences. I'm taking this ribbon, it's just pink ribbon, and I'm cutting it to actually be the closure on this little journal. I taped it with double side tape just at the spine and I've laid it over now where I want it. Now, I didn't put it halfway down the book because of where my digi is going to sit and you'll see that later in the video. So now I've taken in, and this is actually oboe reed thread, okay? Now I realize most people probably don't have oboe reed thread laying around their house, but you could use carpet thread, you could use ribbon, you could use any sort of um, t thin twine, just something very sturdy because you're going to want to tie this off as tight as you can. Now I thought it would be fun to use oboe string because um, I play the oboe and so does my cousin that I'm making this book for. So that made it more personal, I think. Um, these are some charms and I'm just gonna tie them to the back of the spine of my book and they're gonna dangle off just for some decor. And I'm gonna speed this up quite a bit because watching me tie all these charms on is gonna not be very fun for you as a viewer. We're moving into the inside of the book and the pages. I cut this little fan in Cricut Design Space and it is going to act as a little pocket on the inside of the front cover. And um, you can slide little pictures in there or notes or business cards or little papers, whatever you like in there. I'm uh, covering this with fabric tack and it's going to go over the top of that fan just to add a little bit there. And then I'm going to come in and uh, jewel that up a little bit. These are Bow Bunny Double Dot Jewels. I like them. Um, they're pre-glued on the back and you just pull them off the sheet and stick them on where you like them. I've had a lot of success with it sticking and staying stuck, so I really like these. Now let's move on to some of the pages. I went ahead, I didn't film all of the decorating on these pages. I'll just flip through and show you what I did. On this one, I added some more of that washi tape and just added some lined paper. This is a little lantern. Uh, from Cricut Design Space. 
Now, the way these are going to slide in is exactly that. They slide in right underneath your thread and the thread holds them into place. This is a great binding system for a little book like this because if she needs a piece of paper, she can just take one out of there and write it down and then give it to someone or she can stick it back in the book either way. Here's another little tuck spot in this paper. I've included some graph paper and on the other side is lined paper. This is just a little floral ribbon. Um, these are some little puffy stickers, some leftover scrap paper there on the top. And there are those little butterflies. I added rhinestones, little clear rhinestones to the front of that page. So the little butterflies are fluttering around with the little sparkly gems. You can see them there. I also included some yellow bow bunny double dot jewels. Now it is time to put that beautiful little digi on the front. I have Copic colored her. She is from Connie Fong. And I will definitely include a link where you can find this digi because you're going to want her. She is so adorable. How I made her is I went into Cricut Design Space and I printed her on top of a little fan from Cricut Design Space and then colored, Copic colored the digi. I'm now adding a little floral brown button to the front and I'm putting a little pink sparkly gem in with E6000. Again, I believe that E6000 is a better choice when you're working with plastics and metals. I just feel like it holds better and since it's going on the outside of the journal, I definitely want to be sure that it's going to hold. Well, that finishes up this little journal. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I welcome you to check out my other videos and leave me a comment below if you like. If you're interested in these sorts of paper crafts and you feel like it would benefit you, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and ring the little bell so you're notified when I have new videos that come out. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.